Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jackie and I'm an aspiring writer. And if you are not new here, you'll know that this is a different setup. So um, this week, my husband and I are in holiday in Cyprus, which is a little bit of a relief to be completely honest. I think 2020 has been a mess for everyone. For me personally, I started a new job in July, which obviously is a privilege when this year is what it is. And I know a lot of people are struggling but a new job is a challenge and I was starting it remotely and it's an industry that I'm not familiar with. It's also not a role I'm familiar with. So it's been um, a fairly challenging start and I am due for a break. It has also meant that my writing suffered a bit. So I did want to do NaNoWriMo this year and with the new job plus some freelance work that came in, it was just too much at once. So. I'm hoping that this week will be a really good chance to recharge. I'm also hoping I can do a little bit of writing. So this is going to be a casual, chatty week in the life vlog while on holiday. It's a very catchy title. I should use it for this video. So when it comes to the writing side of things, I've got two things that I'm looking at. I don't know if you heard that, but I think like a cat just ran into a garbage bin or something and knocked it over. Anyway, the things I'm going to be working on this week are one, I've been doing an experiment where I'm plotting out some different ideas using the anatomy of story. So by John Truby. And at the moment I'm looking at the chapter on character. So I'm obviously working on that. That will also be a separate video. If it's out before this one, I will put a link in the description. If it's not, it'll probably be the next one after this one. So subscribe so you don't miss it. Um, the other thing I want to work on is my work in progress powerless. So that was my NaNoWriMo project for last year and I revised it in Camp NaNoWriMo in July and then sent it to some beta readers for feedback. So now I've been through all of the feedback and I'm not really sure how to approach the revisions from me here because I am a work on one project at a time type of person. But Given that this, this is taking a while, I'm actually not writing anything new. So I'm thinking I might try doing them both this week because I have been having ideas about some new scenes I could put into Powerless that will hopefully address some of the issues I've been having. So yeah, stay tuned for updates, I guess. And if you're worried about COVID and how sensible it is for us to be taking a trip at this time, please put your minds at ease. Um, my husband and I live in Estonia, which has maybe 100 cases a day at the moment, which is very high for Estonia, but for Europe in general, I think it's the safest place to be at the moment. Cyprus is a little bit worse, but not much. They're around 200 cases a day. Um, we have been following all of the rules. We did need to get a negative test before we came here. Um, we're obviously wearing masks uh, when we're going into shops or any sort of transport when we have to, so we're being safe. But now I've got maybe two hours before my husband gets up. So I think I'm going to try writing a little bit of Powerless and I might also try filming some of my Anatomy of Story vlog because I have actually done some of the exercises. I just haven't filmed how I went yet. decided to do something that I didn't do when I was last trying to revise Powerless, which is retyping out the entire thing. And I know this is something that a lot of writers do. I sort of thought, well, that's a waste of time if something doesn't need changing. But today, I just thought it would be helpful. It can help you see things in a new light. If you're also not in the mood for writing, simply the act of typing could help prime you almost like it's like a warm up, just retyping some of the stuff you have. And because I want a new like chapter one, it's fairly easy to get started by just retyping the prologue. Plus some of the feedback I had was that 
I don't introduce where the book is taking place until too late, which that's something only one reader complained about, which was the editor I sent it to, which I don't think it's important. Like I don't want to have, so like, you know how a lot of fantasy books have a prologue telling you about the world and the history of the world. I don't want that. I don't want anything to take away from the action, but it could be earlier in the book. So I'm trying to figure out how to put that into the prologue because it would make sense there. It's also a little bit difficult though because the prologue is supposed to be this fairly tense scene and you don't want to take away from that by adding a whole lot of description so we'll see. Anyway so I retyped the prologue and then I started doing the new first scene and I had this idea where Hannah could be looking at the superhuman register which is where all superheroes are registered in this world um, because their rights are restricted and so on and that could be interesting to give some more context around the world and how supers are seen and treated and it could also be a good way to introduce that Hannah is very unusual in that she has the super gene mutation but doesn't have powers so I thought this could be a regular thing she does every couple of weeks she looks to see if anyone's been added and if there's anyone who's been added who doesn't have powers so I'm adding that in and I think because I've got a a bit of an exciting prologue. I have a little bit more license here to do a bit of exposition in this way. The problem is that I'd taken the approach with the last version of the book where I'd sort of like, you know, dripped hints and clues and details throughout. And now I'm worried that everything I'm putting in here is stuff that I'd sort of hinted at later. And I, I really don't want to talk down to my readers by saying all of this stuff outright. So yeah, I've just got to figure out how I do this without saying everything outright, but maybe it'll work. I don't know. Maybe I should stop thinking about it so much. Anyway, now my husband is up, so I'm going to um, start preparing to go out for the day. It's actually been a couple of days since I've filmed now because the other day when I was filming I had an unfortunate moment where I put everything onto a pile to move back inside and my camera fell face down onto the ground and it looked fine so I didn't bother turning it on or anything I just went and plugged it into the wall to charge and then yesterday when I tried turning it on I got an alert saying it didn't recognize the lens and please attach properly and I googled and the only advice Google had was try cleaning it, which I did and that didn't help. We just went to the Sony Center in uh, Paphos, but they couldn't help because their technician is away for two days and then this weekend we're going home. So I have no vlogging camera anymore, which is very sad. It also means we're back to the GoPro, so when we get back to the apartment um, we're probably going to get some more potato quality footage. So that's fun for everyone. Today though we've rented a car and we're going to head out to um, the Tala Cat Sanctuary which is, I don't know if it's technically in the mountains but it's on the way there. Um, then we're going to see a monastery and from there I think we'll make a decision about whether we want to head to the coast or head deeper into the mountains. So it should be fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am queen of the cat. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing up there? <laughs> hey, what are you doing up there? That's not your house. <laughs> no, I'm not your house. <laughs> don't, don't get any other ideas.
so slight spanner in the works. In fact, another spanner in the works if we're including breaking my camera as a spanner. Um, we went to the Adonis waterfalls and the road there was very bumpy and it's thrown my neck out, which um, is really annoying because we've only got like three days left until we go home and I have been taking things easy but I really wanted to use this trip to catch up on some of my writing and planning and haven't really done that much yet and now I can't really because I'm lying in bed hoping my neck stops hurting and I'm just even though I didn't do this to myself I'm annoyed at myself because you know I only have so much time off and I really want to use it wisely which as I say that I'm aware that maybe that defeats the purpose of having time off but basically I only have so much time off I'd like to use it wisely I would like to make some progress on powerless and my planning and you can't really do that once your neck goes out just because even sitting up and typing is painful unfortunately so Drew is off on a mission to see if he can find deep heat or a local equivalent and physio tape and painkillers I'm hoping that, yeah, tomorrow things will improve. Happy Friday. I cannot believe it's almost the end of the week. It's actually really disappointing because maybe my expectations for one week off were too high, but I was really hoping that by the end of this week I'd feel like creatively revived and ready to dive back into work. And now I'm just like, I could really use another week. <laughs> but oh well, it is what it is. And honestly, I have no reason to complain because I know that so many people are in complete lockdown right now. So I'm incredibly pr privileged to be able to take a holiday. But yeah, I um really did want to be like a brand new Jackie by the end of this week and I don't think that's going to happen especially because of this lovely thing um so neck update is it is much better than yesterday um it's sort of back down to like when I normally tweak my neck as opposed to yesterday when it happened and Drew and I sat down I'm like look can you try giving me a bit of a massage to see if that helps and like even when he was pressing it really lightly it was so painful so definitely much better than it was but I have been doing more anatomy of story this morning and I think all the writing with my right hand has actually irritated it so I'm wondering how long it takes to teach yourself to write with your left or your non-dominant hand anyway that's probably a <laughs> question for another time so I've um, done some good work with the anatomy of story this morning um, on my DID mystery book which was the one that had nothing and what's interesting is starting the exercise was really uncomfortable because I had no characters other than the idea that there would be a murder mystery so there must be a murder and the protagonist is going to be someone with a DID so I knew there would be a number of different characters within that body but I hadn't put much thought into it beyond that and when I got started I'm like oh it's like so hard to start from nothing and it's almost even though the other book I'm working on which is one that I've already written even though that's really uncomfortable because it's like the more work I do the more I see it's a mess at least there's something to work with so it's challenging to go into something brand new again especially because it's been so long but on the other hand I recognize that if I don't start something brand new then I'm not going to get to that stage with any other projects where I have this whole world that I can work with and What's interesting is that this is what's happening with Powerless now. So this time last year, I just started drafting Powerless. It was brand new. I was plucking characters from my workplace at the time just because I needed to fill this world. Whereas now, I'm like, I am thinking about Powerless too. And I'm just imagining the characters in rooms together or in places together and the conversations start happening because that groundwork's already been done which makes it really tempting to just go back and continue working on Powerless, but I definitely don't want to do a sequel until I either have a publishing contract for the first book or I've decided to self-publish the first book. Um, so that's sort of just in the back of my mind, but it's really tempting because I know that a lot of the hard work's already been done, so I don't need to do the world building or the character building. I can just put them all into a story and who knows, I still need to think of the story, but I can just put them all onto the page and things will start to happen. And that's not happening with this new stuff yet. I'm hoping though, when I've done this a couple more times, this earlier bit will be a bit easier because I'll know that that later bit is coming. 
One of the things that is a little annoying is how long it's taking, but that's also on me because I haven't been doing it consistently. I haven't set like an hour or two aside every day to work on this. So if I'm only looking at it every couple of days or when I was back in Estonia every couple of weeks, of course it's going to take a long time. So from here, I would really like to continue with the exercises, but I am worried about aggravating my neck even more. <laughs> so I think I'll take a break for now and I'm not sure what the time is. I'm guessing it's around nine. So Drew will probably be up in half an hour or so. And then we're going to head to the mountains today to see another couple of monasteries and maybe some villages. And I believe there's not going to be any rain today. There wasn't supposed to be any rain yesterday. And then there was a complete downpour when we were at the cat shelter. So we were like trapped there, which was not a bad thing, like when you're surrounded by cats, but we were trapped there for a while. So I'm hoping today when it says there'll be no rain, there'll actually be no rain. So fingers crossed. Saturday, which means it is the last full day of our trip. We head back. Our flight's at 3 p.m. tomorrow, but we need to be out of the Airbnb at 11, so we'll head to the airport then. Um, Cyprus has actually been shut down now. Not completely, like we can still get out. Our flights are still running, but everything's been closed um, because unfortunately over the last week the numbers, COVID numbers have gone higher. So I think that just means we'll take it easy today, maybe do some walking, but nothing's open, so it's going to be fairly relaxed. So this is a good opportunity for me to catch up on some writing and some outlining, but I wanted to check in first because my, my husband has betrayed me. Um, so we've got this little outdoor area you can see where I'm sitting, and this is where he tends to hang out at night after I go to bed because we sleep different hours, so I go to bed before he does. And... You know, he hangs out here, watch movies, watch YouTube, whatever. And um, he ate my ice cream. <laughs> and the reason this is a problem was because the ice cream was for me. It was a treat for me. And he already had treats. He, like, I'm looking at the bottles here. He had two bottles of wine. He had two big bottles of beer. He had, I think the Pringles might have been from a previous night, but he had a bag of chips as well. He did not need to eat my ice cream. And now it's empty. I mean, no. <laughs> Look at this, no, nothing left. So when he wakes up, we're going to need to have a talk because this, it's just not on. editing Jackie and I forgot to film an outro either at the airport or when we got home from Cyprus so we are now safely back at home and I have gotten my camera fixed actually slightly unintentionally I took it to the like Sony maintenance place and when I emailed them they said it would be 36 euros to fix then I dropped it off and got a quote back which was 130 euros and I went look that's a bit much I can get a second hand lens for less so I'll just pick it up then they told me the 36 euros was like a investigation charge and I went well that's annoying it would have been nice to know that up front but then I picked it up today and I thought oh just randomly turn it on and it magically works again so I don't know if they fixed it and just didn't charge me or if like something shook back into place when they were reattaching everything but I'm very happy to have my camera back. Other than that another small life update is that if you've been following me over the past couple of months you'll know that I've been very busy with some freelance work. It's one of the reasons why there was a bit of a gap in my video uploading. That is finally done. Last week I sent the final project back to the client. So now I have more free time to do more YouTubing and more writing. So my plans from here are, I obviously want to finish the anatomy of story for my two book ideas that I'm continuing with. 
I want to continue revising Powerless. I'm not sure how I'm going to go doing both of those at the same time, just because it has been a little bit of a struggle to get back into the mindset of writing Powerless when I'm also playing with new ideas. But the thing is, even though I'm playing with the new ideas, I keep thinking about Powerless, so I think I should keep working on it. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this casual, random, chatty travel slash writing vlog. If you did, please give me a like, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And I will see you next time. Bye.